I've finished off the uh, the last coil there. So we've got uh, three on there. Now it, it was hard to do. The last one was. Uh, if we have a look, it's virtually spaced out correctly. I think it make that much of a difference. But uh, if I find that's it. That's the one I just did. The uh, the last one of the three phase. Now, if I hook up a meter to this, you'll see we're getting a nice uh, 50 ohms, the same as the rest of them. Now, uh, I'm just going to go and grab a magnet, and uh, I'll show you that effect that I was uh, telling you about. So I'll go and do that now. So, uh, with the uh, magnet in, we got uh, 50. If we take the magnet out, it goes down. If we uh, just move it slightly, you can see that the uh, resistance of the coil is changing. I'll uh, hold the range. So we get a point where we get minus resistance. Thought that was quite interesting anyway. And uh, I'm going to uh, see what it looks like on the oscilloscope now. So what I've done is I've uh, soldered the three coils on the way around. I'm just going to place it over the top of this bottle now and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, lacquer that and I can take the pins out and then uh, lacquer it again and hopefully we should have a coil which is not going to come apart that's great then I'll do that now I'm just leaving it to dry now and then I can take the uh, pins out the outside and lacquer it again and then uh, all we have to do is uh, we've got our uh, soldered lugs then I think you can see a couple of them there the, uh, we can just uh, sandpaper off them lugs and we can use them to uh, solder directly onto them so we're just going to wait for this to dry uh, and uh, give it another few coats uh, make sure it stays in place. Well, I got a bit impatient and uh, I used a hairdryer on it. And I don't know if you can see there, uh, what's happened is uh, the <laughs> it's melted the tube in some way. So where it's slightly tied to there, it's malformed it. So uh, even though I'm going to use this as uh, my first coil, the, uh, I'm going to have to start making another one now. And uh, I suppose we always learn by these mistakes. So if you're making one yourself at home, and uh, you're making it with a, uh, a plastic insert, uh, do not use a hairdryer on it. <laughs> okay then. Right, I think I've managed to salvage as much as I can out of it. The, uh, if you uh, uh, turn it around now, it looks almost even. But uh, uh, there's definitely uh, one part in it just there where uh, I can see that it's uh, malformed and gone in on itself slightly. So I'm still going to use this as a, uh, a test coil. And I've learnt a lot from making it. But, uh, uh, I think I can do it a bit more precise than this because I can see uh, certain gaps. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm still going to use this, but uh, I've got a, uh, another coil here that I've made, which is a uh, bifilia uh, on uh, this torrid. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, unwrap it, and I'm going to use this as the uh, the main base now for my uh, my second coil. The uh, 
the Cubic Coil Mark II, as it were. So I'll get on with that now. And uh, thanks for watching.